好。This video will not include archetype specific monsters and instead focus on standalone cards. This is because there are some Yu-Gi-Oh archetypes that contain cards that could fill this entire list on their own. Like the Ghost Trick archetype. It's a really cool looking deck and all of their cards look like that they are Halloween themed and they would be perfect for this countdown, but that is also why it would be too easy to include them. Another example is the Burning Abyss archetype, which is literally based on Dante's legendary journey to the depths of hell, so of course there's going to be demons and other scary things featured in their artwork. Or Pegasus is classic two monsters that also all look very creepy. And I have always viewed Toon cards actually as being low-key the darkest Yu-Gi-Oh archetype. That's just my opinion though. So let's not make this list too easy and that all being said, let's also try to get through this countdown without mentioning twin long rods. <laughs> King, King of Ghosts. I'm making this card number 10 because it's the first one that I felt like talking about. This is not only because it's obviously a pumpkin and therefore very fitting for this time of year, but also because this card was featured in the very first season of Yu-Gi-Oh! during Joey's duel against Bones in the caves on Pegasus's island. The artwork in that episode is just so cool, guys. You cannot beat the original anime's artwork. You just really cannot. I recommend that you watch this stuff. I'm going to be showing some of my favorite artwork from those episodes right now on your screen but I highly recommend that you go watch the original anime and enjoy and experience this for yourself because the original artwork guys is just so nostalgic for me and it is just so good to boot. They have not been able to match this in any Yu-Gi-Oh anime since. This duel is also one of my favorites from the original anime because of course Bones plays zombies. He's the zombie duelist. If you guys have followed this channel for a long time you will know that I used to play zombies and you'll also know that zombie and fiend cards usually have the card art that looks the coolest to me besides fairies and of course some other individual cards, but for the most part I must be an edgelord or something I guess because zombies and fiends just always look the coolest to me. The number nine slot is actually going to be a two for one special because I chose Fushio Richie. Fushio Rishi. Fushia LaBeouf Richie. And you can't have this spooky mummy without Great Desert, which summons him from the hand or deck if you destroy two of your opponent's monsters, which is a very unique effect. I'm just going to quote the Yu-Gi-Oh! wiki here. This is one of the few cards, if any, whose effect activates after destroying a certain amount of monsters. Fushia LaBeouf himself also has an interesting effect. You can flip this card into face down defense position once per turn during your main phase, and summon zombies from your grave when it's flipped face up, and it negates the activation and effects of all spell and trap cards that target it and destroys them. This card isn't on the list because of its effect and summoning condition though. It's on here because it comes in an ultra rare and I always see it randomly in card shops and stuff and it's the most badass looking mummy monster ever printed in my opinion. At least I'm pretty sure it's a mummy. He's very skeleton like as well but Nosferatu in this card's Japanese name is a Romanian word meaning devil or vampire and Nosferatu of course is also the name of the vampire from the classic horror film sharing the same name and SpongeBob. Nosferatu. Next up is Morphing Jar. And Morphing Jar, guys, is scary enough in Go format alone because it discards yours and your opponent's entire hands and lets you both draw five new cards. It can be very advantageous and very catastrophic when this card gets flipped. And just look at this thing. Tell me with a straight face that you'd stick your hand in that jar. What the hell even is that in there? It's either something very scary hiding in the shadow, or it's the dwarf in the flask from Full Metal Alchemist. You can call me the dwarf in the flask of Monculus. Necroface. The name says it all, really. This is a necro face if I ever saw one. It's a baby's face because, of course, why not? Let's make it a baby that goes through this fucking nightmare. There's tentacles coming out of its face that's halfway gone and missing an eyeball. Because once again, let's make it a baby that's going through this. It's not only going to grow up having self-esteem issues because of the tentacles, but it's also going to be missing a fucking eyeball and have no depth perception. The good news is this card has a great effect and has been useful in many different Yu-Gi-Oh decks and formats. It shuffles back all banished cards into the deck on normal summon, which is a pretty insane effect. That's not its whole effect, but that's the main one. Back in the day, I used to use this card's effect to shuffle back banished Mallies so that I could special summon them back from the deck, which was pretty fun. So yeah, guys, Necroface. Very, very unfortunate infant. Very, very good effect. Like Lord, King of the Underworld.
I felt like putting this skeleton card on here over a certain other skeleton card because the other skeleton card is technically kind of an archetype in a, in a deck, just... Yeah, I chose this skeleton card because I love the way it looks. I've kept it in my collection for years. It's just this really sick looking card from way back in the day when they made Yu-Gi-Oh cards look way cooler and darker. So it's a pretty good throwback card in my opinion. I've also kept it around in my collection and put it on this countdown because it's got a decent effect. Its effect allows it to keep coming back to your hand if you use it for a tribute. So this card has potential to work with ritual summoning, for example. For the number five spot, I put Water Spirits. I'm putting this thing on the countdown because it might freak me out more than any other card on this list. It just has this ugly skull dominant face with freaky eyes and just Buh. It always reminded me of the human hybrid monster from Alien Resurrection, which is an observation I pointed out on the channel in the past. I think that that added resemblance is what makes it so scary for me though, to be honest, because that thing was so creepy in that movie. Alien Resurrection wasn't the best horror movie ever, but that monster was top notch chilling in my opinion. Next up we have Shadow Ghoul. This card is not only creepy, but it's a classic. This card was used by Para and Docs during their duel versus Yugi and Joey in C Season 1 of Yu-Gi-Oh. This is the same duel that introduced us to other classic cards as well. Mainly though, Gay Guardian and the three monsters that make him up. Kazujin, Suijin, and Senga of the Thunder. Shadow Ghoul also kind of always reminded me of the fly monster from Cronenberg's The Fly. The fly monster in that movie always freaked me out when I was a kid. And that's still one of my favorite horror movies to this day. That movie is just so good. So that tiny bit of resemblance that I see makes this card even more terrifying for me. Even though the fly monster that I'm talking about might look more like Metabo Globster. But that's also an eerie card, so let's just go with it. Plague Spreader Zombie. Leg spreaders up, oh god. This card is not only one of the best tuner monsters of all time, but it's one of the most bizarre and horrifying. There were mixed matches of parts that were used to make him, including a hoofed leg that's probably from Mizuki, and arms that appear to be taken from Berserk Gorilla. There's a test tube and nails and stuff sticking out of his head, his face is creepy as hell, his clothes are all torn up, and if that all wasn't scary enough, according to the Yu-Gi-Oh wiki, this monster is probably based on the Yokai Nepepepo? New people, no, pe, pe, pe. I'm not doing this again. An undead, amorphous being that wanders aimlessly, spreading its odor of rotten flesh. Which actually sounds like a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players, oh shit. <laughs> ill blood, guys, ill blood. This is another classic zombie monster, but one that never saw quite the amount of gameplay as Plague Spreader Zombie. Although it has been played in different zombie builds throughout the years. Because even though it's a level six and a Gemini monster, it has an effect that lets you special summon zombies from either player's graveyard, which works very well with Zombie World. This card has the evil eyes going on, the crazy hair. It looks like he's a criminal psychopath or something because of the striped prison outfit and ball and chain. There's this face busting out of him, but also makes him up. Kind of like the bugs that made a boogie boogie in Nightmare Before Christmas, which is pretty cool considering this card looks like a doodle or something that Tim Burton would do. Remember when Tim Burton made good movies, by the way? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Believe me, guys, my cheap usage of old memes hurts me too. And finally, for that number one spot on the countdown, we have yet another two-for-one deal just like earlier. Except this time, we are going to end up talking about a lot more cards here because we have Dark King of the Abyss. And of course, you cannot talk about the Dark King of the Abyss without mentioning his arch rival, Dark Ruler Hades, who cast him out from his rule and started the epic journey that we can see and follow on the cards. These two monsters combined have been featured on more than a dozen Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Going over them respectively, and there's probably even more that I don't have here, especially if you guys are watching this in the future. Going over them respectively, Dark Ruler Hades has been in the artworks of Flash Effect, Destruction of Destiny, Leading Question, Victim Barrier, A Deal with Dark Ruler, Bark of Dark Ruler, Demotion, Destruct Potion, Hate Buster, Order to Smash, Sinister Yoroshiro, Skill Drain, The Puppet Magic of Dark Ruler, Soul Demolition, and Trading Places. Not to mention Revived King Hades, which is really the arch enemy of Dark King of the Abyss, and appears in the artworks of Destruct Potion, Fake Life, 
Mind Drain, Reanimation Wave, Reject Reborn, Skill Prisoner, and Soul Drain. Now, Dark King of the Abyss is also on Demotion, Hate Buster, Reject Reborn, Skill Prisoner, Mind Drain, Destruct Potion, and Fake Life, but he also appears independently on Herald of the Abyss, Abyssal Designator, Powerful Rebirth, and Call of the Archfiend. I had to choose those two guys for the number one slot though because they have been around in Yu-Gi-Oh for so many years and they are definitely two of the darker characters that have ever been introduced into the game and the card lore. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video and enjoyed this countdown though. There are so many more dark and evil and creepy looking Yu-Gi-Oh cards that of course I could not fit on this countdown guys so go ahead and let me know what your favorite creepy cards are down in the comment section. And as always boys, you know what to do. Subscribe! <laughs>